Welcome to Angler's Trading Post. I'm Jeff Coffey and today we're talking jigs. You know, the jig is one of the most used lures out there. It's so easy to grab a spinning rod, you can use a bait casting rod, you can put it on the end of a fly rod as well. And they create such a good movement in the water. The whole point of a jig is this weight that we put on the front of it. Uh, often that's lead, unfortunately, but we're, we've got some new jigs out with bismuth now and tungsten. And the goal of this is typically to get that to go up and down in the water. That jigging motion is why we call that a jig, is it goes up and it goes down and it jigs back to us. These things are made to hold skirts, little rubber legs, uh, silicone worms, silicone crawdads, all sorts of different ways that we can use this, but primarily this is designed to create an up and down movement. When things are dropping like that, they're usually struggling, and that's when fish see that as an opportune time to eat their prey. So this is just a really good way to fish in so many conditions. The other nice thing is the weight is attached, so we can get into deeper holes. Um, sometimes the challenge as a, as a fly or a spinner is to not get down where the fish are when they're being pushed down to the bottom. So let's talk about the different parts of a traditional jig here. Obviously, you attach your leader or your line at the eye here. Now, a jig can have a 90 degree bend, it can have 60 or 45 degree bend, um, and it can even have a straight eye. Again, the, the key is, is that it's, it's intended to drop. And then as we come back, we have a shank right there. That's the long straight part before we come to the bend, right? Bend comes around and there's the point. Now there's some challenges to the traditional jig and the, one of the challenges is the geometry between the eye and the point. And those two parts right there work together when I set the hook and when that fish jumps or when I'm in the fight. So we, we have to look at some advantages and disadvantages to this hook. One is, is that the fish really has to get their mouth up and around it in order to set that hook. A lot of times we'll get tail grabs back behind it. Um, sometimes we'll just miss fish. And the reason is, is that when I'm pulling on this, it's so far down that my line is running up like this to the tip of my rod. And when I pull that, look at this. See how it, how it instantly pulls up? Just like that, little resistance. And I'm pulling sideways on the point of that hook. I'm not actually burying that hook in. So that's kind of one key problem. The other is, is that the distance between the point of the hook where it hits the shank and the eye, the longer the shank is, the more it works like a pry bar or a lever against me in the fight. Look at this, as I pull it up, again, it's pulling that hook back out of the soft tissue of that fish's mouth. And now it's easier for that fish to spit or release. And then when they jump up and they turn their head sideways, it comes popping out. So we lose a lot of fish to jigs, even though a very effective way to get that bite. So we thought that we would change that up a little bit, trailer jigs, and that is eliminate that long shank. A, put the hook further back with a wider gape, shorter shank on the hook, and we created a hinge right there. We call that a trailer rig, so that's why we call that our trailer jigs. But that eliminates that lever action working against me. This can stay in a lot better in the fight on there. We still have the head. Our heads are made out of bismuth and then we overmold that with a recycled plastic. This is a completely non-toxic or lead-free setup right here. Bismuth is actually used in food like Pepto-Bismol. Uh, it's the active ingredient. Again, we're still getting that movement going up and down. Now I said that there's lots of different materials that we can apply to a jig, but look at this. We've started to apply fly tying materials. And the reason for that is that these materials move in the water. We actually choose each individual fiber so that it flows at a different rate when it gets wet and when it's moving through the current or, or when you're swimming that jig. And so <clears throat> each one of those, when one fiber is moving this direction because of the difference, another fiber is moving the other direction. Next thing you know is we have this lifelike breathing action when that gets in the water. Well, I hope that was helpful. As always, feel free to ask any questions that you have and we'd love to help you out as best we can. Thanks for watching.